Hi, hello and welcome to Learn Stroke IS classes by Arjun. You're listening to the editorial analysis, editorial uh, summary for the current affairs for 2024 UPSC exam. And this is class 12 and uh, you are with me, Arjun R. Shankar. Let's uh, move on to the important editorials of the day. Here we go quickly and understand the Olympian Heights. So this one clearly talks about the sports in India. And the most important being India is trying to hold... Uh, why don't, uh, you know, what are the plans for India to host the Olympics? How, how will it be when we see that India is going to host the Olympics? What is going to be the, the international prestige that India is going to get? So this is, read it from international relations perspective also. Because when you host the uh, important uh, Olympics, there are going to be a lot of international relations prestige that India is going to get in the international community. So let's quickly apply the IS filter and... Uh, Yes, so quickly move on to the, uh, let's check out the important points here. So one is India's Olympic ambitions as a soft power, number one. So the historical significance of hosting an Olympics is always seen as exerting the soft power. So what is the concept of soft power and why is it very important? Because every country in the international community needs to exert a soft power very much. And it emphasizes that the Indian government led by Narendra Modi and especially is actually planning to get an opportunity for 2036 Olympics. So it's not sometime near in the future. India is planning to host the Olympics in 2036 to gain international prestige. That's the word here. And what are the important mistakes that we have learned from the past? We see that uh, the, the youth Olympics uh, signals a desire to overcome past issues and scandals. Because when uh, India is always known for... Uh, some of the very bad experiences in past issues and some of the scandals. When in 2010, India conducted the Delhi Commonwealth Games, there was a big time corruption and mismanagement allegation against India that India did not conduct it really well. We had a big time political scam out of that. So that is the Commonwealth scam. That's something very popular that if you if you know, if you I don't think you will remember that, but still you, you can have an understanding. So these are the important topics of learning from the past and also <clears throat> from an international perspective or international relations, the IR perspective, you can see it's a geopolitical ambition. So uh, when you host the Olympics, it is actually, you know, creating a bigger thing to have a geopolitical ambition such as uh, what is the biggest thing involved in this to get a permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council. So UNSC India is aiming for a permanent security permanent seat in the UNSC and to definitely uh, one thing that India has already got is the G20 presidency it has already got and now India is definitely aiming for a permanent seat in the UNSC but so when you host the Olympics uh, this can actually take out increase our credibility also and what are some of the important sporting goals so the recent success in the Asian Games has given confidence to the uh, Indian Sporting Union and the people related to sports because they believe that uh, the coming Paris Olympics of 2024, India can achieve definitely a double-digit medal. This is something that India wants to gain. Double-digit medal is even possible. So, uh, uh, and what are the, some of the challenges of hosting the Olympics? Again, it is always going to be money. It is always going to be money and the financial aspect relating to that because it is not easy to do that. So, uh, in terms of cost, so you can ask the previous, uh, take the example of 2016 Rio de Janeiro and Tokyo Olympics 2020. You see that majority of them witnessed heavy financial burden. So you keep a budget like this. This is the budget called X. So what happens is you start from zero, but what happens is this budget exceeds the planning and it will reach a new point called X1, where this is actually the exceeded plan. It will actually exceed this much. So it's a big amount of money. And recently, you can see the case of Tokyo, $15.4 billion was spent. It's a ballooning cost that was that went in for conducting the Olympics. And that is the reason why many countries like Australia and Canada have withdrawn from hosting international sporting events. And the reason due to the big expenditure that they have to invest. You know how World Cup Qatar invested a lot of money on that. So it's, it's all creating soft power for the country. So the International Olympic Committee is now encouraging the potential host cities to tailor their Olympic projects to fit their economic 
and uh, social and environmental reality so ioc is actually agreeing to this point if you are not if you are a small country if you want to host this you can, we can actually fit in according to the economic social and environmental reality so it's a good thing and uh, let's quickly get a questions what geopolitical ambitions and goal is india pursuing through its interest in hosting olympics so give your views so what is the geopolitical ambition and the goal india is pursuing so let's hope that one day we will indians will win a lot of medals and india will definitely host the olympics also let's really hope for that and uh, moving on to the next is again every day you have articles on israel hamas and this is again gs paper 2 from international perspective international relations perspective and uh, you know every day we get articles but this is slightly from a different perspective so different articles talk about different perspectives so let's understand quickly what are the apply the is filter and uh, let's uh, check out the important points right away and here we go it talks about the unilateral analysis on israel hamas conflict so it, it says that who won the war experts may debate debate on that but one thing is definitely you should get a unanimous consensus consensus that who has lost the war somebody might have won it but who has lost it it suggests that the conflict has been marked by certain failure and it also marks that intelligence failure it's a failure of intelligence who on whose part israel and united states the article says that the immediate attack the hamas attack was very unprecedented very uh, uh, something which was which, which was on a short notice so what does this indicate this clearly indicates the failure of intelligence of israel and united states and that is why hamas launched a brutal coordinated attack surprising it's the word is surprising both israel and the international community and uh, definitely the conflict has seen a lot of rocket attacks hamas creating a big casualty in israel so uh, this is something that we have to know is it's a failure of intelligence and uh, uh, definitely who is losing it and what is the impact on the palestinian politics so hamas actions have weakened the palestinian authority so whatever hamas did it attacked israel it what it has done it has weakened the palestinian authority in the areas of west bank and suggests that the palestinian authority mahmud abbas may have to resign and uh, definitely uh, what is going to be the hamas future is it a was it a good move and it's also source about the military aspects israel is like uh, you know israel is likely to prevail in the conflict israel is going to exert its power but something that we have to remember is what is the method that israel is going to do what is the method that israel is going to adapt israel will use uh, we don't know what israel is going to do and it will use this objective and the potential for ground operation in gaza so method israel that is israel is going to use is going to be serious here and what are the important next points is the human cost of the war you can see a uh, lot of innocent civilians have died on both the sides of israel and palestine and uh, it's also always a blame game in previous articles also we have discussed this thing israel say that uh, this palestine has done this palestine say israel has done this so it's a blame game so uh, ordinary people's life is at stake and what is india's support for israel the indian government is very carefully and very strongly supporting israel but on the other side india is also uh, really concerned about the uh, people's the civilians death in hamas uh, people de death in palestine but uh, the stands i hope that uh, we let's hope that india's support for israel will, will not negatively impact the relationship with arab countries who might support the palestinian cause or uh, hamas so when you support israel there is another chance of uh, arab countries going against india so we have to be very cautious on that but you can see that uh, many arab countries are normalizing this is the key word many arab countries are normalizing the relationship with israel because of economic reasons so nobody is even questioning about palestine because in international community economics is the most important thing you need money trade coming in so most of the arab countries are not fighting for palestine they are actually normalizing the relationship with israel due to economic reasons and this article also draws a clear understanding between israel hamas conflict and the kashmir issue between india and pakistan just like israel and hamas uh, it's a long standing problem without any solution like it, the article also compares it like india pakistan the especially the kashmir problem of india and pakistan it's it's actually drawing on uh, for completely so many years and they uh, they say that it's actually having the maximalistic objective that cannot be realistically achieved so the author says that editorial say that 
India and Pakistan have their own issues, but both of the countries have maximalistic objectives, which in the normal terms are very difficult to reach. So we need to have a better compromise. The maximalistic objectives means uh, it will never happen. Both the countries will speak on uh, their own agendas. So uh, this is in short the summary of the article. And uh, let me give you two important questions. Is there any parallels between the Israel Hamas, Hamas conflict and the Kashmir issue? What ethical questions does it raise regarding these conflicts? Comment. So uh, from both you can compare. What are the implications of India's support for Israel in the context of relationship with Arab countries and the potential for normalizing relationship with Israel in the region? So what are the implications of India's support for Israel in the context of its relationship with Arab countries and the potential for normalizing relationship with Israel in the region? So it's a very tricky question. Try finding out the answers to this question. Moving on to the next important one. The world needs to stop taking water for granted. So this completely revolves in the concept of GS Paper 3, environmental conservation. So it talks about the important concept of water conservation. It's a very important topic. So uh, in one year before the prelims and mains exam, you will at least get 15 to 20 articles on water conservation. So majority of them will speak the same content, but you have to take the most important points, especially when it comes to the prelims and mains examination. You'll get more questions for the mains. You need to have points for that. So uh, what are the important points that we'll have to write? Let's quickly find out the answer. Let's apply the IIS filter. And uh, what are the important points? Let's, here we go. The theme of the World Food Day. So what was the theme of the World Food Day recently? Water is life, water is food. So please remember all these things. It can be very useful for the prelims exam. Water is life, water is food. And uh, what are the important things? You need to have an urgent need for wise water management. So even the 2023 World Food Day talks about the wise, wiser use of water, the wise water management. Due to what? Due to having the climate extremes such as droughts, floods. So we are having a climate extreme. So it's important to have what is going to happen with the drought, what is the floods. So we need to be very... Use the water wisely. That is point number one. Number is, what is the impact on food security? Water's role in food security. It plays a very vital role in food and nutrition, especially for rain-fed farm agriculture that depends on water viability. So, food security is another important on water. And this is the wise use of water. Point number one, wise use of water, food security, especially for our rain-fed agriculture, which depends on water. And next is challenges. What are some of the challenges? Poor water management. Do we have a great water management systems in India? So if, if we say we are poor management system, so why do you think that we have a poor management system? Water pollution, climate crisis have degraded freshwater resources, impacting small scale farmers. So resilient farming is not a problem. It's a big time issue. So when you have water management issues, pollution, climate crisis, so what happens is the small scale farmers who depend on water they get a big time challenge in all these aspects. So, and again, water's impact on agriculture. You can actually very clearly mark this, this whole idea. Uh, let me quickly check my... So, uh, I think uh, that is an important issue that we have to discuss. So, one second, uh, let me just correct this off. Okay, so just resuming the pen here. Sorry, uh, so water's impact on agriculture. So extreme events and variations in water availability severely uh, affect the agriculture production, altering the growing condition. So you clearly know that when you do not have water, when you do not have water for agriculture, it's going to be a big time problem in agriculture also. So that is an important point. And the next important point is, uh, what is India's climate assessment? India assessed the impact of climate change in 2050 and 80, not now, 2050 and 80, Significant crop yield reductions will happen. We'll have a significant crop yield reduction. So we can expect this in the future. And even the Food and Agriculture Organization, uh, you can see FIO is implementing a crop forecasting model in which uh, several Indian states to help rain fed farmers to make uh, informed decisions for food security. So one thing is crop. This is an important point. It talks about crop forecasting something that uh, we need to do so 
we need to assess the climate change impact crop this is about the crop yield this is about the crop yield and this is about crop forecasting and what is ifed uh, you can see international fund for agriculture development so this is ifed is also trying to do climate resilient crops very important point it talks about climate resilient crops another important point so what are climate resilient crops and the world food program wfp means world food program has collaborated with odisha government on initiatives such as uh, for uh, creating small folding farmers like solar technologies millet value chains etc so what are the important points coming here one is crop yield crop yield crop forecasting by uh, international fao ifad has come up with what climate resilient crops and this is even resilience initiatives like solar technology millet value etc so these are all water management so remember if you write all these points all these points are really really helpful for the mains exam i hope you are getting this point clearly and uh, next is uh, you can see what are some of the actions that you need for food security to achieve global food and nutrition security you should see that uh, there is a need for political commitment and investment in policies promoting innovative technology so one thing if you want to take an action what is the one action that you can take have political commitment create all these things you need to have a commitment to work out everything and investment investment in where for promoting innovative technologies sustainable irrigation climate resilient agriculture water recycling equitable water management if you can have investment and support in all these areas like what are the areas you can just see uh, have a political commitment have investment in where uh, innovative technologies sustainable irrigation climate resilient agriculture water recycling equitable water management if you can have an action on this there is going to be a big change and the un's food agency in partnership with the indian government is working on innovation projects like what are some of the projects which india and un is working solar for resilience secure fishing and the revival of millets so all these are important examples of un working with the indian government so please remember solar for resilience secure fishing are all un related programs that india is collaborating with you can all use these all these points to write your answers also so importantly and uh, i'll give you three important questions here what are the major challenges associated with poor water management pollution and the climate crisis in the context of food security and agriculture how does in climate change impact crop yields in india and what adaptation measures have been taken to address these challenges and uh, what key policies and investments are required to ensure global food and nutrition security and how are un food agencies collaborating with the indian government in innovative initiatives so all the three questions are really good questions if you can write well please do check out and find the answers to this and moving on to the last editorial of the day closing the gender pay gap in the workforce again i should say that this is important from gs paper 1 uh role of women the status of women in india and even from gs paper 2 welfare how a welfare activity should help women and even from gs paper 3 the workforce in india or you can say economy so gs 1 gs 2 gs 3 economy workforce etc and this also talks about the most important thing you can see uh it talks about uh, the various views on how women and workforce it article completely talks about the women and workforce so what is it going to be the women and workforce so everything is going to be revolving around women and workforce and uh, how is it going to create a big time impact in that let's find out quickly let's apply the ias filter and uh, let's quickly move on to the important points so one is the con- challenging the conventional beliefs so you can see that historically women's absence from the labor force was attributed to child care responsibilities you agree that previously women had to take care of children so they were not really ready for the work and their lower pay was linked to lower education level so uh, previously they did not have the kind of education that they had so obviously they got very low pay because of lower education so this completely article talks about claudia golden the 2023 economics nobel prize winner so her view she challenged these ideas and got a solution to women's labor force challenges in the labor market job market so this is the theme of the nobel prize winner the solution to women labor force 
challenges and in the job market so her complete idea study was in this so this is 2023 nobel prize you can clearly have an idea on this so uh, remember this and what is the evolution of women in the workforce and it talks about american example so it talks about the uh, claudia golden's study and she notices the change in american economy and you can see that the economy transitioned itself from agriculture to manufacturing and services you know that you know that very well every uh, society initially the economy will be agriculture dominated the primary market and slowly after the primary uh, contribution it goes into the secondary industry of manufacturing and after secondary it slowly goes into the tertiary or the service industry so american you can see american economy transition from this agriculture manufacturing to service and women were excluded from many job opportunities very important women like many other economies could not find the jobs and only when the offices schools and hospitals began women started getting more jobs so do you agree with that i think even in india you can actually uh, see the same uh, in uh, linking with this and what about the parental responsibility and work inequality definitely in india also you have work inequality when it comes to women um, empowerment and women's work and uh, according to the nobel prize winner it says women's disadvantages in the workforce result in the difficulty in taking jobs with demanding all consuming responsibilities so it least say that jobs which are high demanding which are consuming which has got big responsibilities women do not take that you know why women basically do not have the time because of the parental duties women opt for slow career tracks so that is a very sad thing to notice the parental duties because it is often treated as women should take care of the children so that is even why sometimes even it is called as the mommy track so the word mommy track that you take men take challenging jobs and women do not take challenging jobs because of the mommy track so this has to change even women has got that potential high profile careers but uh, many of them prioritize family life women do not work so that is important and what is the impact of greedy work and inc- income inequality again income inequality and you know income inequality is exacerbated that means it's increasing by jobs that demand extraordinary extraordinary long working hours irregular schedules making them impacting with children so children is the important aspect that you have to notice here so most of the work in the uh, market economy you see that it remains extraordinary efforts long working hours irregular schedules so what happens is women are not able to raise their children and men can actually work this so this create perpetuate gender disparity again all these are, if you write all these points in the main answer it's going to be really helpful okay so remember this from that perspective so reshaping the workplace and institution so it's high time that you reshape so the golden solution includes restructure workplaces and have more reasonable hours predictable schedules and reduce depends on extreme work effect so have what restructure the workplaces reasonable hours predictable schedules and extreme work efforts should not be uh, it, you should reduce that so it's much more easier for the women to work and it says we need to reshape the other institutions such as schools urban planning to create a supportive environment for gender equality in the labor market so this is a very important article in, regarding women's issue so uh, let me give two important questions how has the unequal distribution of parental responsibilities contributed to gender inequality in the workforce a good question for gs paper 3 in what ways can women reshape both the work and social environment to, to promote work life balance and gender inequality equality in the labor market discuss so uh, try finding out all the answers and uh, we have come to the end of the uh, editorial so and the class so please do subscribe to our channel learn stroke is classes by arjun check out all the channels and contact us for anything that you need and uh, please do subscribe and share it with your friends and please do press the bell icon it will definitely notify the articles when i take this so thank you so much and uh, see you in the next class and uh, keep studying well